The Punic Wars are one of the most important clashes between civilizations in history, and their outcome was undoubtedly decisive in shaping the world as we know it today. They constituted a key moment in which the two major powers of the Mediterranean clashed for control, with battles of proportions hardly known before. According to legend, Rome was founded on April 21st, 753 BC. Carthage is older, as it is said to have been founded by Dido, a semi-legendary Phoenician princess, a few years after the Trojan War, thus in the 12th century BC. Although the Romans considered 814 as the year of the birth of their main enemy city, Dido was the daughter of Tyre. Her brother Pygmalion forced her to marry Sicius and subsequently murdered him. It was revealed to Dido in a dream that her brother had committed the crime, so she escaped. Arriving at the present Gulf of Tunis, she met Laba's king of the Guaitali. Dido asks to give them as much land as she can surround them with a bull skin. They laughingly agree, thinking she will get nothing. Dido cuts the skin into very thin strips and manages to cover a large amount of land, on which she founds Carthage. Years later, the son of Venus Aeneas arrives there, who after fleeing from the fall of Troy, was looking for a place to found a new city. He becomes Dido's lover, but abandons her by order of Jupiter, who had reserved for him the creation of the lineage that would give rise to Rome. Dido, dejected, commits suicide. This is the mythical explanation given by the Romans to the visceral hatred between the two peoples. With the passage of time, the city of Carthage came to dominate the northwest African coast, southern Iberia, the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia, and western Sicily, favoured by its central position on the Mediterranean sea lines. By the 3rd century, Rome was also a power, having conquered a large part of the Italian peninsula thanks to its victories against the Latins, the Samnites, and the Greek king Pyrrhus. The two republics had traditionally had good relations. In fact, they had allied against the invasion of Pyrrhus, but their desire for expansion is about to collide for the first time. In 288 BC, the Marmotines, a group of mercenaries, find themselves out of work in Sicily and decide to conquer the city of Messina, which allows them to control the strait between Italy and Sicily. Syracuse, ruled by the tyrant Hiram II, besieges them. The Marmotines asked for help from both Rome and Carthage. The first to respond was Carthage, which already controlled a large part of the island and quickly succeeded in making the Syracusans retreat. The Marmotines still want to ally with Rome, but the Romans hesitate. The Senate discusses it at length, the entry into Sicily. On the one hand, there were those who believed that entering Sicily would mean war against Carthage, and that this would be detrimental to Rome, as well as being in breach of the treaty signed with Carthage in 278, whereby Rome would not enter Sicily and Carthage would not enter Italy. On the other hand, others believed that not acting against the Carthaginians would be dangerous, since they only had Syracuse left to control all of Sicily, and then their next step would be to enter Italy. The Senate passes the decision to the Popular Assembly, which ends up deciding in favour of war against Carthage, thinking that it would bring wealth to the city and a large amount of grain, the main product of Sicily. In 264 BC, Rome starts the First Punic War with an expedition to expel the Carthaginians and the Syracusans from Messina. Subsequently, it besieged Syracuse, initially allied with Carthage, until the tyrant Tyron II decided to change sides. The Carthaginians retreat to Agrigento, the main Punic city on the island. Rome besieged it with 40,000 legionaries distributed in four legions and 2,000 knights. The city was well walled, and the Romans, who had the logistical support of Syracuse, had no siege technology to take the city, so the only way was to surround the city and wait for its surrender by starvation. To help the Agrigentines and the garrison of the city, about 1,500 men arrived a few months later. A Punic army formed by about 50,000 soldiers and 6,000 horsemen, commanded by Hannibal. In addition, it had about 60 African forest elephants. They are smaller than other elephant breeds, but reached two and a half meters in height. The Romans had met them some years before, in the wars against Pyrrhus, when they did not even know their name, and called them Lusanian Archons. Both sides fought in the open field until the Romans won, although many Carthaginians escaped. 
Finally, after seven months of siege, the Romans managed to take the city, and the inhabitants of the city were enslaved. However, the most important part of the war will be fought at sea. Carthage was a maritime power, but Rome had to build a fleet practically from scratch, since so far all its conquests had been made by land. At this point, military intelligence was key, since for the construction of their new fleet, they were inspired by the ships captured from the Punics after the capture of Aquagento. The most commonly used boat was a quincura, with five rows of oars, and to a lesser extent, the trireme. An important role was played by the use of the corvus crow, a boarding system already used by the Greeks, which according to the historian Polybius, was mounted on the ships and consisted of a gangway, movable with a pole, 1.2 meters wide and 10.9 meters long, with hooks at the extremities. A pulley made this device descend on the enemy ships, allowing the soldiers to board. This is how the Romans achieved their first naval victory at the Battle of Milan, today's Milazzo, just after being defeated at the Lapari Islands. This ingenuity initially surprised the Punics a lot, but it made the ships heavier and less manageable, which contributed to the destruction of many ships during at least three storms, and to their use being abandoned after the First Punic War. In the following years, they alternate victories in various land and naval battles, including some clashes on the islands of Sardinia and Corsica. The Carthaginian soldiers, after being defeated at Sulci, crucify their admiral Hannibal Gisco. The Romans launch a new offensive under the command of Marcus Etalus Regulus, who wants to move the war to Africa. He defeats in the naval battle of Cape Encomo the Carthaginians, whose generals were Hamilcar and Hanno. He then captures or convinces 200 African cities to change sides, and Carthage even asks for peace, but does not accept because he considers the conditions offered too harmful. The Carthaginians had asked the Lacedaemonians, or Spartans, for a mercenary general, Jantippus Arrives, who soon proves his worth and defeats Attalus by capturing almost his entire army, including him. The war continues in Sicily, where the Romans, after rebuilding their fleet, win at Palermo. General Astrobal succeeds in reconquering Agrigento and a large part of Sicily from the Carthaginians. For a few years, there were no decisive advances. The Punics send an embassy to Rome to negotiate, bringing Attilius with them. Attilius himself urges the Romans not to negotiate and returns to Carthage, even though he knows it will mean his death. After a storm, Rome has to rebuild its fleet again. This time, it is privately financed by a few prominent citizens, as the state was without funds. The final battle that decides the war takes place in 241 BC on the Agates Islands. The Romans are trying to block Carthaginian supplies to the west of the island. The Carthaginian fleet spotted them, and finding themselves downwind, attacked them. To fight in these unfavourable conditions, the Romans decided to dismantle all the non-core elements of the ships, such as masts or sails. This was essential, since the Punic ships were much heavier as they were loaded with supplies, and the Latins were able to ram them better thanks to their lightness. About 250 ships of each side faced each other. The Carthaginians lost 10,000 men and were left with no more economic or military resources. They surrendered and signed the Peace of Natatius, renouncing Sicily, which became the first Roman province. Carthage also undertook to abandon all the islands between Africa and Italy and to pay important war reparations. And this is the end of the video, like a great night of the theatre introducing the main protagonists. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment about what other character, battle, event, or historical curiosity you would like us to cover. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did. See you in a few days. Bye!